Greetings, I'm Professor K, and in this short video presentation, we're going to see how we go about configuring our standalone server for a static IP address in preparation of promoting it to a domain controller. In our previous video, you saw how we used PowerShell to name this computer, giving it a more user-friendly name so that we could quickly identify it. In this video, we're going to go on to the next step of statically configuring this machine with a IP address. To begin this process, we're going to first need to launch PowerShell, so let's just right-click on our Start menu, and from here, let's go up and select Windows PowerShell. To see how our machine is currently configured with its IP addressing, whether it's static or DHCP, and what the IP addressing information currently is, we can use the get net ip address command and hit Enter, and in just a moment, it's going to pop up all the information you ever want to know about your IP configuration. So up here at the top, you're going to have your IP version 6 information. And then down here further on down, you're going to get to your IP version 4 information. Currently, I have a dynamic IP being assigned to me on my Ethernet interface, given the index ID of 11. And I can tell that this is DHCP because it tells me so. We also can see the IP address for the, another interface, that is interface 1, which is not being used. So the interface that I'm concerned with is going to be interface with the index number of 11, which is currently configured for an IP address of 192.168.56.101. With our previous get command, I was able to identify the interface, and it was assigned an index number of 11. I also saw that it was dynamically configured with a specific IP address, but that's not the IP address I want to assign to my network. I want to go with my IP addressing convention that I've always used, which is 192.168.45, and I've always IP'd my domain controller starting with the host IP of 10. Now, by default, they're going to use that prefix length of 24-bit for the subnet masking. Now, another switch that you can add in here is for the default gateway. It's just dash default gateway and then you can assign the IP address for the default gateway which is normally the inside interface of your firewall or your router that'll take individuals out to the internet. Anything they can't find on the internal network the default gateway will direct them to the inside interface of the router or the firewall that will take them outside of the network so they can find what they're looking for. All right, so I have everything configured the way I want it. I'm just going to go ahead and hit Enter, and it comes back up. It lets me know that the command completed successfully, and I now have a static IP address on my interface with the index number of 11 of 192.168.45.10. Let's go ahead and clear the screen, and now we're going to go ahead and check our IP configuration using the IP config space forward slash all command, and we can see that I now have a static IP address assigned of 192.168.45.10 to my Ethernet adapter for this particular machine. Now since this machine is going to be a domain controller, I don't want to statically configure it with its own IP address for the DNS server. When I install this machine or when I promote it to being a domain controller, it will automatically assign itself the loopback address to its primary DNS and that is what we want because we don't want this machine looking for itself. If we assign the loopback address for the DNS role, then it knows to look local. That concludes a short video presentation on how we go about configuring our forest root with a static IP address in preparation of promoting it to a domain controller. Now if you have any questions or concerns about anything that was covered in this short video presentation, please do not hesitate to reach out and contact your instructor, and I'll see you in my next video.